Now, before we start learning SQL, we have to understand the data itself. And we will not just be looking at the data that we are going to use in this course. We will also talk about how this data is stored in the database and why this is an efficient structure. So here we have on our screen a general ledger, which records all the transactions that do happen in the accounting system. Other than that, we have four other tables. We have the chart of accounts, territory and calendar table. Now let us take a look at first transaction and you will notice that here in this transaction, you do not have any information about the territory in which this transaction was, you know, recorded. So the only information here is territory key. So if you want to see the information on territory, I mean the country and city, you will have to go to territory table and there you will be looking for the territory key one. So take a look here we have territory key one and that means the transaction took place in the USA and the region is North America. Let me go back to my GL table and let me show you for the account key as well. So here you can see we have no information about which account is here, you know, which, which GL account has been used to record this transaction. You can actually ignore this details column because details column is normally useless. So account key is 230. Now, if you want to know that which account has been used to record this transaction, we have to go to our chart of accounts and look for the account key 230. Let us go there, chart of accounts, scroll down and 230. So you can see that the account, uh, the 230 means that this account that has been used is the cost of sales account, which actually belongs to profit and loss statement. And in the profit and loss statement, this relates to the top part, which is the trading account. So now going back to my general ledger, you can see that in my general ledger, we have the record for all the transactions, but the additional details are stored in other tables and from there we can fetch those details if we analyze if we need to analyze our data now this table here is called data table which records the main data of the system all other tables which provide additional details about these transactions are called dimensions table so all of these tables are dimensions table in this table here, I mean the data table, you can see that we have territory key and the account key, which is providing me the link to other tables. So if I have to communicate, if we, we want this table to communicate with other tables, there has to be some link. So this territory key is providing us the link with territory table and this account key is providing us the link with the chart of accounts table. So these keys are coming from the other tables. Here we will call them foreign keys. But if we go that to these tables here, in these tables, these keys will be called primary key. Now one thing we must keep in mind is that this key in these tables, I mean the dimensions table, these keys can only be used once. I mean there cannot be duplicates and that is obvious you cannot use the same key for you know for your cash in bank and cash in hand if you do that you won't be able to you know distinguish between them in the reports so to make sure that all of these things are recorded separately we have to use a separate key for them so this way we say that in these tables i mean in the dimensions table these keys cannot be duplicated now let us talk about our last table. This is the calendar table. So if you look at my calendar table, you can see we have details for each date like year, quarter, month and day. And this will provide us the ready data when we need to analyze our financial data over time period. I mean years, quarters, months. This will be providing you the ready data. So you will not have to write further complex formulas for that. But that is not the only purpose. The additional purpose here is if I go back to GL, I can show you that for each transaction, you only has a date. But 
another thing that we should keep in mind is the dates here can be you know not available for some of the transactions so for example if i am talking about sales it is not necessary that you have the sales for every single day or every single month so there can be dates which are not available here in our main data table but the beauty about this lookup table here is that i mean the dimension table for calendar here is that we have every single date that is available here and this is very useful when there are days when a specific transaction is not happening and you want to show that as blank in your uh, in your charts and graphs and reports so that that is why we always use a separate calendar table so it provides us a complete list of dates from start of the data to the end of the data and also other than that it provides you many more other fields readily available for your analysis by the way if you want to analyze your data in even further dimensions like weekdays work versus weekends holidays versus working days you can add those conditional columns here as well that is not a problem i have just added some basic table columns here which are always useful so let us conclude in our data the data in the database environment the data is a split in different tables these tables are connected with each other using the keys in the data table the data with the table that stores all the transactions we store the keys from other tables and these are called foreign keys here and you can see that all of these foreign keys are same or for all the rows these are same so foreign keys are usually duplicated there is no problem but when you go to those dimensions table you will notice that all of these keys are unique here and taking these primary keys from these tables to our data table as foreign key is how we connect these tables now if you are working in a bi system like power bi or excel you will be connecting these tables using data modeling but if you are in database itself as we will be in this course we will not need to connect the tables the system will be able to you know the tables will be identify uh, will be able to identify each other using these keys automatically with this we now have a basic introduction to our data the foreign key the primary key that data table and the dimensions table so we are now ready to start writing some queries and start learning the sql